Hello, this is Kevin Olson from TextLearn.com, and welcome to Lesson 6.6 .6 of the Intro to Java series. In this lesson, we will be discussing readers and writers. So readers and writers are additional objects provided by the Java API, which we can use to read and write characters from files. Some examples include buffered reader, buffered writer, string reader, string writer, input stream reader, input stream writer, and so on. They are imported from the Java I.O. package. And one key advantage of using readers and writers is that we can define the character encoding for that reader or writer. This means that we can specify which type of encoding we want to use, and different types of encodings are used on different operating systems by default. So for example, Mac might use one default encoding, Linux might use another, Windows uses another. So we want to be able to control what type of character encoding we are using in our program. And readers and writers allow us to do this. So if we were to write a program on Windows, we might want to specify for example, that we want to save the file using UTF-8. Now, when we load that program on Mac, instead of we save it on Windows, we load it on Mac, we want to, now that we know that we saved that using UTF-8 in our program, our program can load that file using UTF-8. And that way we know that the character encoding is consistent. When we use the other objects like the scanner or the print stream, it'll just use the default encoding type for that operating system. So that's not exactly, that's more platform specific. So this is a way to get around that and have greater control over the encoding type that your program is using. So you should probably lean towards using readers and writers over using the print stream or a scanner to read an input stream. So let's take an example or take a look at the example here. I have Eclipse open with a new project I called six underscore six reader writer example. First things first, I'm going to show you how to create an input stream reader and read the contents of a file using it. So first we're going to have the file input stream and I'm going to just call that fis equals null and we will have the input stream reader in reader and I'll leave that as null as well. And I've already imported these from the Java IO package. Now we have a try block and our catch exception e, e.printStackTrace, print out the error message. Okay, so within our try block we can now try to go ahead and load a file. So we'll have our file input stream and we're going to initialize that as a new file input stream and we'll give it a file to open. So openme.txt is what I'll call it. So we're going to open a file called openme.txt and we want to open this with the input stream reader. In order to do this, all we have to do is initialize the input stream reader with the file input stream. So in reader equals new input stream reader and we need to put fis in there. So the file input stream goes into the input stream reader. Now just like when we use the standard input stream and we read from that, we can do the same thing with the input stream reader. So we can have an integer i, a character c, so we will get the bytes in terms of characters. And really it is giving us character bytes now instead of just the bytes. So we can do while in reader or while i equals in reader dot read so we are reading that character in a form of an integer and that's not equal to negative one so while we don't while we can still read from that we will say character c is equal to char i so we're casting that integer into a character and now we just do system out dot print C. So we print that character to this console. Now we close the input stream reader and the file input stream. So in reader.close and file input stream.close. So we close the input stream reader and the file input stream. Let's take a look and I will create a new 
text file called openme.txt in my project folder, and I'm just going to write some random text in here. Hello, I'm Kevin. Whatever. OK. Save that. And now we run the program. And it says, hello, I'm Kevin. So we were able to read from that file using the input stream reader. Now to define the character encoding type for the input stream reader, we can add a second parameter to that input stream reader when we initialize it. So we'll put a comma after the file input stream. And then we can use the standard char sets to get a constant char type. And we do, do standard char sets dot and then these are all the different character sets that Java has that we can access. So if we wanted to use UTF-8 for example we could define that as being UTF-8 and now the input stream reader knows to look for characters in the form of the character set UTF-8. So let's go on to the next example the input stream or the buffered reader. So we will leave these two guys here. To create a buffered reader, what we have to do is we then pass the input stream reader into a buffered reader. So we will have a new buffered reader. And we'll just call this buff read. And that's going to be null for now because we're not initializing it until we get to the try block. So I'm importing the buffered reader from the Java IO like everything else in here. And now we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing, but we're going to use a buffered reader this time. So we have this equals new file input stream openme.txt in reader equals new input stream reader file input stream. And then we have the buffered reader buff read equals new buffered reader, and we just pass the input stream reader into that. So we put the input stream reader into the buffered reader. And now we can use the buffered reader to read from that file. So in order to do this, we will go ahead and we will do while. And we're going to have to have a string. The buffered reader has a method uh, to get the whole entire next line in it. So we're going to use that. So I have string this line and we'll just leave that like that for now. Now we can say while this line equals buffered reader, so the buffered reader dot read line, so we read the next line, and while that's not equal to null, so while we're able to read the next line, it's just throwing that into the next line, so we can just do system out print line and we'll print out the string containing that line. So reading it one by one, and that will read the line. This is similar to how we used scanners before. And when we read the, when we used a scanner to load an input stream, we were able to use the next line method to get the next line. Well, we can do this, this similarly with a buffered reader using that read line method. This is probably a better way to go about doing it. Again, because we have control over those character encoding types. So now that we've read the lines, we can close the buffered reader. Buffered read dot close, in reader dot close, and file input stream dot close. So we're done using all those. We can close them all. Let's clear the console. And I run the program again. And it prints out the line, hello, I'm Kevin. And of course, if I was to add another line, it would say, Hello again. I run that and it'll print out both lines this time. Hello, I am Kevin. Hello again. So that is the buffered reader with the read line method. The next example that we are going to do is a writer. So let's do an output stream writer this time. So first we're going to have to create the file output stream. And we're just going to call it FOSS equals null. We're going to have the file that we want to define here. So we're just going to call this file out, or I'll just call it file file equals null. And we're also going to want to have the output stream writer. And I'm going to call it outright. And that'll just be 
null outrider, and that'll be null. Okay. And I have to import all those from the Java IO package. So we import the file output stream, the file, and you can use files with the input stream as well. But I just wanted to do that here for some reason. Anyway, so we go ahead and we declare our file object. So file equals new file, and I'm going to call this output.txt. Then we throw that into the file output stream. So file output stream equals new file output stream fos, and that'll create that new file for us. Or fos equals new file output stream file, my bad. Put that file in there. Okay, and that creates a new file for us when we initialize it, if it's not already there. And then we can go ahead and initialize that output stream writer. Out writer equals new output stream writer. And we pass that the file output stream. And that'll give us our output stream writer ready to use. So we can go ahead now and print some text using that output writer. And we will do this by creating, by using the output writer's write method. So we can do outwriter.write. And you can see that that takes a string as an argument. So we can put a string in here, write this text to the file. So that's what's going to get printed out or written into the file. And then we do outwriter.flush, flush that stream out. We can now close everything. So outwriter.close, fos.close, and file. Actually, no, I don't have to do file.close. OK. So let's take a look at this, try that out, run the program, and check the directory. You can see we now have file output.txt. I open that up. It says write this text to the file. All right, so we successfully printed that text to the file using the write method. So that is the output stream writer. The final writer we're going to talk about in this lesson is going to be the buffered writer. So we can create a new buffered writer. And just like the last time, the buffer is a more efficient way of going about reading and writing things. So we can have a buffered writer, buffer write equals null. And I have to import that guy from Java IO. And we will leave these first lines the same. And we do buffered writer. So buffer write equals new buffered writer. We initialize this guy. And we just put the output writer in there. So now we have the outwriter in the buffered writer. And the writing methods work the exact same way with the buffered writer. So we can do buffer write dot write, and we pass that a string we want to write. So write this new text to this file. And then we go ahead and flush the buffered writer. Buffered write flush. Buffer write close. Out writer flush, outwriter, close, and close the file output stream. So we close all those guys, and the text should now be written to the file. Go ahead and run that. And it looks like I have an error, right? Because we flushed the buffered writer, my bad, we don't have to have that output writer flush in there. Now we run this again, and now you can see it ran successfully. We check output.txt, and now it says, write this new text to this file. So that is the buffered writer. Works the same way as the regular writer, just, just with a buffer now. And that kind of happens automatically in the background. We don't have to worry about creating an actual buffer ourselves in this case. All right, so this concludes lesson 6.6. .6. And in the next lesson, we're going to discuss working with the file system. So that'll be pretty interesting. We'll learn how to copy and paste files and things like that. Take care.